Carlin? Aaron? I'm, I'm right here. Hey, I've Carlin, been, how's it going? I've been waiting here since we last talked. Just sitting here waiting. Um, listen, guys, we, we want to say thanks for uh, for answering the phone call, for, for agreeing to do this special bonus episode. I feel like this is a gift. This is a gift that we're giving our dedicated listeners because we're we're right at about the two year mark of doing the show. I'm still here with with Bam and Dog, with with John, and with Scott, and uh, I don't know if you got my email, but we sent you a script. Uh, yeah, I saw the email. I'll let me. I'll open it here in a minute. I I. <laughs> I mean, still marked on red. You know, when I when I mark when I don't mark things as red, then it reminds me at some point I need to read them. So I'll just kind of explain what we're doing. We're we are in the process of building Bama Dog's image right now, and we're we're coming up with a bunch of different ideas for him to become the next James Bond. And we're thinking, what better way to do that other than a screen test, or, or actually sending some demo reels of Bama Dog as Bond. So we need some story ideas, and we didn't want to steal scripts from previous James Bond films. We wanted to come up come up with something new, something right, fresh. That, right. that we let good. the James Bond films steal from the James Bond films. That's what we do. We let them do that. Exactly. And I came across an old script that my mom had left with me not too long ago from about when I was in fifth or sixth grade. Um, was that a question? <laughs> I, there was a question mark at the end of that. Uh, when I was in fifth or sixth grade, I can't remember who the teacher was. It was either Mrs. Gerritsen or Mrs. Free. Uh, we were asked to write a story as part of our assignment. And I wrote a James Bond fan fiction story. It's about five pages long. And this is this is about this, this is around the same time that on career day, where everybody comes to school dressed as what they want to be when they grow up, I came dressed in tuxedo as James Bond. You talked about this before on the show. Uh, I, I believe the episode 001. I believe so. Um, so this, this is around the same time. This is this is, uh, this is after Goldeneye. I, I believe maybe between Goldeneye and Tomorrow Never Dies. Close to close to around when Tomorrow Never Dies came out. We 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 got the script and we want to we want to read through it to see if there's any potential. Uh, yeah, I, I wrote this as you know grade schooler, but. Um, it might have some potential. What do you What do you think? I'm just glad you're including me, and so hey, I'll I'll jump in and do it. So now I've got uh, I'm playing the lead. Well, no, no, no. Okay, so in the script, a uh, 007 is actually me. Of course. Uh, I, of course. He's not He's not named James Bond. He's right. actually named Aaron Nix. Now I presume if you had known me back then, you would have written it about me. That makes sense. Okay, all right, fair enough. That's not weird at all. Uh, but the the title is 007 Flash, and I don't know why i named it 007 flash but i i I think there are a lot of different characters in this story it's about five pages long i would like if you could play all the different characters so i could focus on being 007 okay all right are you up to that do you have it in front of you now are you you gonna be oh i guess i need to open it okay (sighs) to give this the authenticity that we desire Mm -hmm. we're going to do this as a Mm -hmm. more of like a, a book on tape so we've uh, we've hired out somebody to do the narration for us. Oh, so my you've uh, hired me to do the narration? No, my my real life colleague John uh, has agreed to do the narration for the story. It's going to be great, and this is going to be uh, we're going to give this the proper treatment. Okay, but before we record, I wanted to give a couple disclaimers. Uh, this is me in fifth or sixth grade in the nineties. Uh, there are a couple jokes in here that are not so politically correct. I make a. There's a joke in here about a midget. There's a, a maybe a couple other things. This is little. This is much younger me making these things, and this isn't uh, reflective of who I am as a writer now. Mm. Just want to throw that out. There. Yeah. Well, I think in the spirit of James Bond, it's politically incorrect. Okay, great. Okay, let's do this, guys. Guys, we're we're about to start. Cue music. <coughs> cue music. <coughs> Me, 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 me. 007 Flash by Aaron Nix One day, 007's secret agent, Aaron Nix, was walking along the street. It was a beautiful day with sunlight, birds chirping, and cars humming by. 
Aaron stopped to buy a soda at a teepee-shaped snack stand when Q came up to him out of breath. He was trying to talk, but nothing came out. What is it, Q? We have to come to headquarters right away. 007 worked for the British government and has saved the world lots of times. They wanted Aaron to do a mission. Q was the electronics director and inventor. He has invented many things before, having to do with weapons, cars, and many other things. Russia has stolen a missile that couldn't be stopped or be on radar. MI6 said, We have information that Matt Nothenhagel has made the missile. He is in control of the project and has hid the missile in New Zealand. Then they showed Aaron his pictures. He's a midget? <laughs> What's so funny about that? Nothing. So Aaron went to New Zealand. They dropped him off by helicopter where they thought the missile was. They flew away and left Aaron alone. But I assure you that Aaron was loaded with a silenced PP-7, a mine, and a decoder. Aaron was looking around in what looked like a desert. He couldn't see anything. Then he saw a little steel door on the ground. He opened the door and went down a ladder and couldn't believe his eyes. The room had thousands of scientists reproducing that one missile. Then there was a clatter. It was his mine. It had fallen from his pocket onto some big gas tanks and somehow turned on. He had to get out of there quickly, but then he saw the missile on a F-15. The only problem was that it was about to take off. He had to stop it, having only a second to think before the guards were shooting at him. Aaron ran, trying to dodge bullets. He then saw the computer that locked the missile to the jet. Jumping down the stairs, he ran behind a desk. He looked up and popped a few guys in the head and stole their assault rifles. A guard snuck up behind the desk, but Aaron was gone because he was hiding on the other side of the desk. Suddenly, Aaron came out and knocked the guard out cold. Another guard standing right behind him had a rocket launcher, but Aaron was too quick. He shot the guard and took his rocket. The jet was already in the air, so he had to act fast. Aaron took the rocket and shot at the jet, but he missed. Blast. The only hope he had now was that the missile wasn't out of range to decode. Then the missile would drop. He used the decoder on the computer that controlled the missile. Typing as fast as he could, the missile was out of range. A second after that, he then remembered the mine was going off. Having 30 seconds left, it seemed like a mile to run. He ran and ran. The clock had 10 seconds to go. Aaron had just made it up the ladder and about 10 paces out. He dived to the ground when he heard, BOOM! The underground building had blown up with soil everywhere. He was so lucky. After he got up, he called Q with his intercom on his watch. A helicopter flew down, knocking Aaron off his feet. While he was up in the air, he saw a huge hole in the ground. When he was back to headquarters, Q wanted to show him something. They walked down a long, narrow hall and into a parking lot. Q, why are we in a parking lot? I'll show you. Q took him to a BMW. This is probably the most high-tech car in the world. Now watch this. Suddenly, there was a control panel on the steering wheel. Q told him about all the weapons and security. After that, Aaron decided to take a break at Club 91 for a drink. When he got there, he had a few drinks and talked to the ladies, of course. He was sitting there. The bartender looked at him in a weird way. He resembled the picture of Matt Nothnagel. The only difference was that the bartender had a beard. It was a dark and mysterious evening. When Aaron walked outside, he could smell danger in the air. While he was cruising along in his Beamer, he saw a black car without the lights on. He thought this was very suspicious, so he turned and turned again. The car was obviously following him. All of a sudden, the car's lights went on and full speed ahead. A guy in the car pulled out a gun and pointed at 007, but Aaron yawned and rolled up the window. The guy shot at Aaron, but the bullets ricocheted off the bulletproof window and hit the guy who shot it. The car went flying into some trash cans. Aaron laughed and drove on. Then another car came out of nowhere. The car was trying to swerve 007 off the road. The man held out a grenade launcher, but Aaron had on his force field when the grenade hit his car. Aaron thought swiftly and put on his brakes. The other car went in front of him. He pressed a button and missiles came out of the lights. One missile fired at the car and blew it to smithereens. He was driving along when he saw another black car, but the other man didn't seem to see him. Aaron decided to follow him because it could lead him to their hideout. The car was taking its time. It stopped in front of a barbershop. 
He followed the man down a secret passage. Aaron was walking slyly behind the guy until he stepped on a stick. The man turned around and went for his gun, but he was already dead. Another man had heard the shot and was coming. Aaron used his last bullet. He looked up and saw a light. 007 jumped up, grabbed it, and swung. Aaron's feet went sailing into the other man's face. He could hear people's feet coming. He looked up and saw a vent. He climbed in just in time before the guards saw him. He crawled through the vent. Then he looked down and saw the missile under him. He looked around to see how to get down. He looked straight ahead, and there was a girl. Hi. I'm from the Chinese government. My name is Lucy. She explained for her presence, and they decided to work with each other. Aaron figured out how to get down. He had to use his laser watch. He zapped the bottom of the vent until it broke. They both slipped down. Aaron shot the guy that was standing by the missile. They both looked around to see if the missile had any weaknesses. Lucy opened up the little door and pulled out a microchip. Look what I got. They started to go up the vent when the guard yelled, Stop! I got a clear shot at your head! Aaron and the girl slowly turned around with their hands up. Aaron was surprised to see it was Matt Nothnagel. Aaron and Lucy ducked behind the missile and backed away towards the door with the missile in front of them. The guard didn't know the microchip was out, so he thought the missile would explode when he shot. Aaron backed away with the missile in front of him towards the door. Suddenly, Lucy opened up her coat, and there were six different types of guns and six hand grenades. Lucy threw one at Matt. After that, they ran out of the door and up the secret passage. They had completed the mission. Afterwards, the two governments had a celebration for them. The bartender asked for Aaron's drink. Martini, shaken, not stirred. When he was walking out, a little kid asked for his autograph, and Aaron wrote, Nix. Aaron Nix. So, uh, well, thank you for doing that, Carlin. I'm glad that you told people that I was doing all the voices, because I'm sure that if you hadn't, no one would have known it was me that did them. I mean, maybe if this podcast ends, you could you could have a second career and... Uh, character voice acting yeah maybe maybe so uh any any thoughts about this um i have just one thought okay or vavavi <laughs> yeah i don't know what that was because uh so i go to new zealand and but the guard is supposed to be russian i'm not sure what that word yeah, means i'm not sure what or vavavi is um and also, I don't know why the Chinese government's involved necessarily. You have to figure that you're you're truncating a what should have been a uh, 120 to 140 page story down to five right. pages. If and you want to see the untruncated untruncated version, watch Tomorrow Never Dies. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, and Matt Matt Nothnagel, it was actually he's actually somebody who was in my class. Um, the, like he was one of my friends at that time. So Matt, if you're listening to this, I, I and was Lucy uh, was she the girl you had a crush on? When no, you I you know after, after reading this again, I was probably maybe I thought Michelle Yeoh's character was Lucy Liu, um, uh, from Tomorrow Never Dies, or maybe I was just watching Xenia Warrior Princess a little too much and I liked Lucy Lawless. Yeah, yeah, Xena. Xena, sorry, not Xenia. Yeah, Xenia. I mean, there, I wish there was a show about Xenia on a top that would have been on if, the action pack <laughs> adventure hour I would have with Hercules, put, the legendary journeys. I'm, I don't know my my kill uh, my kill count is in this film. I think it's I think it's rather high just for the car chase alone. I kill. Like, How many people were in the explosion? Oh, dozens. Uh, but you know that's that's just part of the course for a James Bond film. Well, but it's not a James Bond film. It's an Aaron Nix film, really. It's, I mean, here I guess this is my last question that I have. 007. 007. Is that okay. some point 007 died or retired, and you took his place? You took the number. You're the new 007 agent. Well, yeah. I mean, we could, we could really get in depth in this, and we've talked about. Uh, you know, are all the James Bonds the same? Supposed to be the same character? Obviously, I t I took it another step and I said no. I said there is a replacement for James Bond, and that's me. 
that's why I went as James Bond 007 at, for career day. So I'm assuming I will be the next 007. How, how, what kind of, what does that do in the uh, Nebraska office? Does that create tension between you and Alabama Dog? I don't think he's read the script yet. Uh, we're kind of reading it for him and giving him notes. Uh-huh. Um, and we might leave that note out. Out of there. Because uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't really like to read scripts or read books in general. He likes oh. well, summaries. that's good. Because they, they did cast that guy recently to be the voice of Bond um, for the books on oh. tape. And, David uh, O'Yellowo? Uh, yeah. Something like that. Um, yeah, don't don't tell Bam and Dog that, please. Mm, I already tweeted him, but that's okay. So, so Devil was, Devil was Seven Flash, no boat makeout scene. Mm-mm. Unfortunately, I I was not. I mean, that was completely in your control. You could have totally it was done in my that. My control. I wish I could go back in time. And it's not even a makeout. There's no boat, no makeout. It's a kid there's asking. No boat, there's no makeout for there's, an autograph. Still, I I don't know. That's. I I feel like if a real James Bond film ended that way with James Bond signing. His autograph, as if people, you know, he's no longer a secret agent; he's a celebrity. Um, well, that's the way it was handled with Moore. That's that's sort of the Roger Moore uh, era. That's the that's the celebrity era yeah. of James Bond. Okay, so uh, be honest here. Would you put this story? Uh, would you rate it as a as a top tier, middle tier, or bottom tier story? Um. Well, so what I have. What you sent me over is a uh, like a scan of the original paper that you had handed in, and yeah. on the front page, uh, Mrs. Garrettson or Mrs. Uh, Hocken- Hockenfeffer or whatever her name was. Hockenfeffer. I wish I had Mrs. Hockenfeffer. <laughs> she wrote on the front page, "Great story." I can't argue with. Mrs. Frida or uh, <laughs> Frida. Ra- Ra- Rousen and Bomb or whatever and, her name was. I can't argue with that. Great story, top tier. Like it came in like a little book. I didn't scan you the actual grade sheet. Uh huh. It's like a little note that was on the front of it with little, uh, there was like a, a graph for uh, story, for uh, like grammar and, you know, things like that. Right. And, it had my grade on it, and my grade was A+. Plus. A+. Plus. Um, that's top tier. That's top tier. And that's top tier material right there. Thank you to my teachers. Um, that I can't remember. <laughs> so, I'm so I'm so happy that you also think it's a top tier story. That means a lot to me, and that'll mean a lot to Bam and Dog moving forward, having your blessing on this um, as, we, as we try to do a screen test with them. Um, we might recast you in all of those characters, but we'll we'll just see. Why why would you recast me? Well, it's not really up to me. Bam Dog is very particular with with cast with casting choices. Um, we're working on a commercial right now. We'll just have to see. What? Thanks, Carlin, for uh, doing this little bonus. Yeah, episode. yeah. Anytime, you know, I can probably got to get back to the stuff that I need to do. Uh, so yeah, you guys. Um, now I guess I'll see you in a couple weeks. As we talk about the spy who loved me, mm, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. We're still doing that, okay? Yeah, uh-huh. absolutely. Spy who loved me. That's the next episode. I will talk to you in a few weeks. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye.